is a part of the city, something like an arrow in the matrix, the chaos in the order. Every city got a system, the system tries to bring order in the chaos. It tries to cover graffiti. To me, graffiti is a mirror of the darkness and the mentality of a city and their citizens. I learned to read mentalities of people through their pieces, which has a lot to do with how and where they grow up. You can tell what someone's motivations and ideas are. Graffiti exists not against the system, it exists as part of the system in order to survive. Pretty much like rabbits living in the burrows, only coming out to eat and take care of their daily business. They have to be smart and always aware of the environment, because the whole world is their enemy. Even though I didn't grow up here, graffiti-wise, the city has raised me. I have learned from it. I have learned how this city works because I understand its mentality, even if it took me a while. This city taught me how to survive as a graffiti writer. It taught me to understand how far I can go and how much I can do with what I actually want to do. My art is what moves me, and that's what keeps me motivated. And I have learned to stay under the radar and to disappear into the deepest depths of the borough. But yeah, there are still some things I will never understand. Maybe that's what keeps it interesting. I personally learned to appreciate everyone's way of doing what he loves to do, and I'm always happy to see some fresh paint. I always wanted to see how all this works in other cities, in other systems. I wanted to experience how other rabbits live and survive. One day I started to move without knowing what kind of madness was lying ahead of me. After 15 years of being active, some of my friends and me, we grew into a huge network. A constantly growing network of people who have similar motivations to paint and live our lifestyle. Traveling has become very important in graffiti and in any other urban art movement. And that's what keeps this network alive. It fills it with fresh energy. It's an energy that makes borders of countries and cultural commitments disappear. It binds. Vienna's a big playground, still, because it got this very own and unique flavor compared to other cities of Europe. The Viennese way, the, the middle way, it's just, okay, graffiti is there, but it's not too big, so maybe we can lack it in kind of way. And if you try to not push it that hard, you can still make a lot of damage and enjoy it. And a big city like Vienna is always a playground. I mean, we started in country yards, paint country spots. I mean, it was fun, but a big city gives you the chance to go in every direction. The tourist way is always the easiest. It's fun. I can relate to it because nothing really happens if they catch you and you don't have to care about the spot in a day, in a week. If you live here, you paint here, you care about your spots because you want to paint it more often. Sometimes people have in their mind the old stories where they just can hike in in every kind of spot and everything is possible. Maybe it still is, but it's the tourist roulette. And of course there are some reasons why things change in a bad way, but I don't know, that's how life moves on. That's, that's part of the game. Ten years ago, the situation was maybe predictable. And now, 
I cannot really say what's going on in the yard, so I have to, to change my way of painting. If I paint street spots, I'm still doing it the Curtis way since the last years. That doesn't change. You can easily paint some cool spots in Vienna, but maybe they are gone the next day. But if you have a good eye for the spots, they last years and decades. That's the fun thing about Vienna. It's also a fun thing how people buff here sometimes. Just clean the house and leave the painted window. It's part of Vienna. That's funny, that's strange. I need the different spots, I need the line spots, I need the trains, I need tunnels, I need streets. If I have to choose only one thing, maybe I would stuck in the streets, which I know wouldn't be that good for me, because if I have a six pack with cans, I just go home if the six pack is over. <laughs> and if I would do this every day, it wouldn't be that good for me. <laughs> And for the city as well, so the balance is very good. And sometimes I ask, or I wonder, why is this stupid graffiti thing so funny for such a long time? And sometimes maybe it's not so interesting to find the answer because it's so funny. <laughs> so I don't think uh, I will disappear because I still like to see my graffiti and I like to go to work and see street tags and I like to take the train to work and I see my line pieces or sometimes even drive with my train to work so that's fun <laughs> the law is very different compared to other cities the whole system is kind of weird and when it comes to graffiti it's it's also kind of weird because they can charge you and they can put you in jail just for a hint that's not possible, for example, in Germany. If you have a mellow and relaxed charge, you're good. If not, the whole thing can really change in a bad way. So if, if they catch you and if they want to charge you, you need a good lawyer. <laughs> the Austrian do it like... One time this and one time that. And if not in this way, we do it the other way. And if the people say it's not right, we do it anyway. <laughs> That's a bit Austria. I like to grow up by myself very much because it's kind of a f freedom and it's kind of a soak in the city in a very unique way and if you're out by yourself nobody is disturbing that moment and Vienna in the night is very exciting and makes a lot of fun and the atmosphere is great and sometimes I just go out because I know my friends they are not motivated to paint that stupid spot so I just <laughs> hit it by myself because it's cool to be a little bit stupid.
Detroit has, you know, this unbelievably rich history of culture. You have Detroit techno, you have Motown, you have punk rock, Iggy Pop and the Stooges, MC5, Madonna, and then you have white rappers, all right? Musically, it's rich, and I think that artists pull from the same inspiration that the musicians do, which is this bleak, abandoned, forgotten landscape. And there's something about being in that that makes you want to create something. Visually, it's a really scary place, right? You see these like skeleton buildings, you see smoke coming out of the manholes all year round, homeless people everywhere. What you don't realize is that it's not necessarily dangerous, it's just ugly. What's so unique about Detroit is its distressed environment, which is these vacant buildings and empty plots of land and abandoned churches and theaters. Those are really what drives the spirit of creativity in our community. People look at us and say, well, Detroit's dead and the automotive companies have left. But what's left there is an aesthetic that's really desirable to an artist. The texture, the smell, the grittiness of it is awesome. It's inspiring and that beauty resonates with artists. When you place a mural inside of a vacant theater where nobody's around and you have to go with flashlights and the fear of maybe somebody with a gun jumping out of the closet there, I think it's exhilarating. It's exhilarating to climb into these buildings. It's exhilarating to explore the urban scrawls that have been left behind the graffiti that's been there for 20 plus years. And when you walk through these buildings, you can almost see the ghosts of the past. Thousands of workers making a decent living wage um, and building the middle class. And these aesthetics in that exploration is really what art in the public domain is about. The city has a history of corruption. The last mayor, the player mayor as they call them, is in jail right now. And everything from the school system to the police system is completely corrupted because if you want something, you gotta pay someone above you to get it. And now, the entire city's bankrupt. It's, you know, a horrible state of affairs. And there's so much pride in that city. Almost more than New York, more than Boston. Like, the fucking D is a powerful symbol there. T-H-A-D, the D, you know what I mean? The Heidelberg Project was started by a black Detroit artist named Tyree Guyton. He hated the crack houses that were popping up everywhere, so he started painting giant polka dots on the fucking crack houses to bring attention to them. He painted like 10 city blocks covered in polka dots. He basically turned this entire city area into an art project that had so much attention on it, the crack dealers just had to move on. And he took that and went overboard and started wrapping trees with shoes, houses with stuffed animals completely covered with them. And all the junk discarded by the city became art. And Detroit's trying to bulldoze it. They don't get it, they don't understand. But he's like 60, so no one really considers him a street artist. But it's like a funny story Dr. Volt told me about in the 80s in New York City. One of the most prolific graffiti writers was a girl named Prey. She used to write this shit fucking everywhere, and no one knew who it was. And it was a little old lady. <laughs> and it was like the craziest revelation I ever found out it was a little old lady. But anyway, so he's kind of like that. It's not the typical kind of street artist. The best thing about painting graffiti internationally is that you're not the only one doing that. By coincidence, an artist I have known for his work for quite a while was staying in an apartment next to me and I was dying to paint and collaborate with him. I think it's you know, just easy, you know? It is easy, it's just circles. So I think that also, that would be the whole wall. And now is the yeah. question, should we just paint on top of the, the rocks? Yeah, and just leave them? Yeah. Maybe 
put it. Slow them away a bit. You know, like just yeah, fade them maybe. Because that way it looked like a background, and then we could also do a drop shadow if yeah, you want. Yeah. Like she's actually running on the block. Yeah. And then you know you tore the can away like you. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, you yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Smells like spray paint. <laughs> Beautiful downtown. I love downtown hot work. Everything is marvelous, beautiful. These guys are doing a beautiful job, and I just love their work. Coming to Detroit, for me, is just kind of like a little holiday and to work with the people I have, it's magical. It's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's something that my entire career has led up to. I'm having a good time out here. Well, in a lot of places in America, well, especially on the West Coast, penalties are, are really harsh. Out here in Detroit, it just seems like it's a place that obviously has a love-hate for it, but at the same time, a world of opportunity for artists. I think that you find in any situation, in any city or any place around the world that when you have no other choice, that it brings out things in you that, that you'll do or wouldn't do, you know, in maybe some other place or situation. And it breeds creativity. The cool thing about working with One Time Rum was that I was able to go wild with my ideas and I had full support. Anything I had in mind, the boys tried to help me getting it done. Working on my show was very time consuming. It's especially hard to concentrate when there's a whole new world out there to explore. But my nights were very inspiring. I had a pretty good run. As much as I loved working on the show, I could not wait to get out there to paint as much as possible and enjoy Detroit also in bright daylight.
Traveling through Europe, especially in the German-speaking area, made a lot of friends, and a couple of them are very special to me. Not only because they are friends, but also because we have similar motivations and ideas, and also affinities in style. But what mostly fixes the bond between brothers is humor and some kind of weirdness. Now, if you see some guys with spray cans in Eastern Market, don't assume they're up to no good. And they came a long way to create new art. Jason Carr gets weird for tonight's Fox Focus report. Bearded bicycling dudes are an undeniable part of Detroit's landscape now, but these particular fellows are not out for a jaunty ride. They're looking for a wall to paint. In our neighborhood, Eastern Market, there's a history of murals. Um, that have been there since the 60s and 70s. So we thought it'd be really cool for Nichos and the Weird to come and put their spin on um, what they perceived was the neighborhood and their experiences in the neighborhood and create these really wild, wacky, and weird murals. 
what we didn't think was going to happen was all the media was going to show up. Um, Fox 2 News and NBC and, and the local papers and the weeklies and all these fans and bloggers. And people were just like, what are these people doing here? They're in Detroit. Why? And they were like, just to paint a mural. Because we have so many different cultures, people are receptive to new ideas and new cultures coming in and exploring that. We just continued to rock out murals. We rented these big lifts because the snorkel lift wasn't really cutting it. And they just jammed. Yeah, it's so good. Look at this. It's good. I, I could never draw like that. You know what? In the long run, put it out in the world. This guy got good good potential. Please do, all right? And tell him the blue eyes will get him paid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my brother. God bless you. I see, see you. Later. All right, man. Thank you. I am an old school techno fan, and this kind of music was invented in Detroit. I always wanted to go there for a typical Detroit techno party. <laughs> It was really cool to be in that uh, city with a weird crew, painting these uh, large walls and hanging out together and uh, drinking American beer. Luckily, we didn't have to care um, where to get our material. So the only thing was where to paint. And therefore, Detroit is a kind of paradise. Yeah, we just moved around, checked some spots out. Every now and then we asked if we can paint there. It was crazy, it was like a fire, starting very tiny in the first days and after two weeks every hour new cars came by, new people stopped, hey, I've seen you on the TV, are you the weird? <laughs> it was sick. We wanted to go like to three or four different places in the US. We cancelled every plan and uh, just chilled in Detroit because um, we had so much opportunities over there. They call me Mopar Bruce. Yeah, I wish you guys could be my bus, man. You know, you know what it's called? The Cool Bus. Motor City Cool Bus. The okay, Cool Bus. Yep, the Cool Bus. I'm putting this bus in the world's largest car show. People from Australia, Germany, China, all kinds of people from all over the world come here for that show. It's located at Six Mile and John R., the Ross Keller of Dakota. They got German sausage, German beer. And I went in there and I sung German songs with them and that, man, sing along with them. That was a party, man, and the sausage is great. <laughs> in Germany, you have to discuss like for weeks to get a wall. And in Detroit, it was like, okay, just talk to the owners of the shop for like two minutes or something. And that's it, go paint. It was so cool that we had the chance to live directly above the gallery space and it was really like a class journey <laughs> once again everybody uh, slept in one room uh, on mattresses and uh, every day was so funny to go and sleep together and, and talk bullshit all the time they didn't expect that we just do it for fun but we said okay no it's just for free we're doing our graph holiday and they were completely fascinated about the stuff which was going on there we had some bikes to go to our spots and the americans said no you can't go by bike are you stupid you don't want to get shot and we just had no other chance because we didn't rent a car <laughs> yeah, that was it. Alles tot. And people, they really seemed to love it. Um, I have the feeling that some of them, they were so excited and treated us like we really renovated the buildings, but we just painted some murals. So it was great to see that it brought so much um, fun or light or positive uh, energy in that city. They lost three quarters of their population, and the size of the city geographically is humongous. It's like the size of Los Angeles, but with 700,000 people, don't quote me on that, but it's under a million people. Imagine 20 square blocks with 10 residents. You have to get power, water, fire department, police, 
to this huge area so it bleeds them dry. You know what I mean? Because they have to provide all these services, but there's only a few people in like, you know, five square miles. It's the first failed city of this country. There's no arts programming. There's no funding for kids to have learn about music and culture. And right now they're trying to sell our museum collection to pay corporate attorneys to run us through a bankruptcy from former corrupt policies. And then you just put art in the public domain. And you say, that's for all of us. And that's what artists do. You just gotta step out of this madness. You're going crazy and you're taking us with you. Can't you stop for a moment and just breathe? I really had my problems um, to understand that city because it is a first world country but having then a city run down like Detroit was really hard to understand. There is a similarity to Berlin after the fall of the wall. For us as painters and graffiti artists, it's an interesting situation because we can find nice and interesting surfaces to paint on. We had two guys who always drove us to that places, big German cars, black uh, windows. Um, <laughs> that was like uh, Navy SEALs going painting. Yeah, what can I tell you? It's always a really nice situation to go to abundant places because you see uh, how nature reconquers their place. It's like trees growing in the fifth floor, but there's also like a layer of the former house. You can see what happened 20 years ago. And then you come and do a new layer of paint over these old layers. The situation of the room just creates a peace. Kill them, kill them, I say, kill them. Kill them. The Americans were really welcoming. And for myself, it was funny to see my German friends in a totally different environment. But America is big, and there's many different Americas within America. Now, it was time to move on. Das sind Maildosen. Und das sind die brauchen Female Caps. Hm? Und das, also das gibt es bei uns eigentlich so gut wie gar nicht. This is pretty much like the same as the wall. Yeah, it is. So we need to darken it with some. We yep. need to go to the store and get some paint. So okay. we need to get some brown mixed. Is it full? Should be. I need to get the mixer. I have a mixer. Just a little 
rutscht dich dann doch wieder schon überhaupt nicht. Hm. Das ist schon ziemlich voll jetzt. Trappy shit. Yeah, and if you gotta do it slower, I'll just splatter it. Oh, okay. I'm wearing my pretty clothes. That's our policy at the gallery. Try to work smarter, not harder. <laughs> <laughs> I think this dirty pink is kind of where we're at, bro. Yep, maybe it's just a little bit more black, huh? Mm -hmm. No problem. I'm running low on batteries, though, so we should do it. We should do it now. Whatever you want. There's more black here. Oh. It should be actually no, it's not. What is it? It's white. Cool. Nice. So Steve's like, we're my buddy. He's gonna um, take a shower and head over to his his barber shop, which is across the street from the mural, to see if he has a chair so we can cut his hair. I came to San Francisco with no plan at all. And since I'm a lucky bastard, I have some friends who hooked me up with the right people over there. With their support, I was able to get a huge wall in the Tenderloin district. The only thing I had to do now was to wait for permission. So what are you gonna do? Meditate over the idea or get a haircut across the street? Hey Alex, it's Chris from Allspace. How you doing? Pretty much the idea. Oh, it was, it was perfect. I love the whole thing. Like, the reaction to it was yeah. amazing. Being able to paint this huge tiger that far in the center of San Francisco, a wall with this high visibility in such a short time of organization, was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. The most unique thing I feel about artists working on such a large scale in the public domain for free. I mean, these murals are not paid for, and they're pretty much done on the dime of the artist. They have to put up the money to fly there. They have to put up the money to get paint. They have to find a way to get to the location. So you're not painting my window. What's with the others? They are okay. Oh, okay, but you're not painting my window. I said, no, no. <laughs> Doing this after eating uh, an all you can eat like fried chicken brunch is not easy. It smells like paint now. It's like fucking bubble. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my The Bay Area is magical. As someone who grew up in Styria, two hours south of Vienna, I feel very connected to this kind of landscape. 
the hills and the mountains. I would almost say it looks like home, only with a couple of palm trees here and there, the bay and the ocean. This place stole my heart immediately. The fact that the Lords, my other crew, is based in the bay and the strong connection I felt standing up there caused that this would probably be the only other place I ever could call my home. Los Angeles, that city has all these different undercultures. It's got lowrider, gangster culture, it's got surf culture, skate culture, all that shit. For me, growing up as a kid, the skate graphics of Pal Peralta Skateboards, Vision Streetwear, and all these companies helped form my influence on art as a really young kid. background for the white, I'm not gonna get the uh, normal acrylic white to paint. Okay. I have a smooth white background because it's brave and it's just everywhere. If I try to fill it in, it will look shit in the end. Right, okay. There was a crazy opportunity waiting for me in Los Angeles. Dissecting Spongebob for Nickelodeon blew my mind. I always thought of myself as a character designer. And I always wanted to do cartoons or animation when I was younger. Unfortunately, living in Austria, you don't have much possibilities working as a cartoonist. We'll need some ice as well, I guess. This is so hot, so though. But since life goes how it shall go, I became an artist, which was probably the only way as an Austrian to get to this point where I am right now. And I couldn't believe to stand in Nickelodeon's backyard painting an artwork for them. I can't tell you where your heart is or the cold. I can't trade it for a bottle and a small. Cats like me, they. You know, like LA is like a driving city, right? So you have to drive around and traffic sucks. So if you want to go see things, it's like a mission, right? But it's not even just like going to look at art. It's like, oh, I need to go uh, like buy like a, a CD player. You know, and it's like even after living there, I lived there for 15 years. Like, yeah, I know where to get certain things, but some things are just like, where can I get this? I'll give you guys the benefit of the doubt. You know, he's not gonna arrest us, but he took my ID. And you know what? I saw him on my block today. Oh no. I swear to God. Uh, my name's Drast One, CVS Crew, Lord's Crew. Lord's Crew, it's a lot like CVS, all around punk rock, skateboarder. We have DJs, we have like metal, like everything mixed, hip hop MCs, and we all just down to smash, destroy graffiti, you know, illegal. And legal. Uh, well, the CBS uh, Lords Los Angeles uh, San Francisco connection came about in late 90s. So it's kind of like a mutual uh, north, south, west coast family type thing. The scenes are a little bit different up north. It seems a lot more carefree. Like in San Francisco, when I was tagging up there a long time ago, you know, get caught tagging during the day with a guy in a briefcase. He didn't jump on his cell phone or like, you know, try and like grab me or anything. He just like, greeted me like, oh, good morning. I was just like, holy shit, you know, this is weird. But, you know, two different worlds, two different mentalities, but it's kind of like a blend, like a mixture. I actually grew up in uh, Canada 
right across the border from Detroit, a little town called Windsor, Ontario. Yeah, I never really got into graffiti till I moved to California in 1990. Driving around on the freeways, I'd see like the letters and stuff and the tags and the scribbling and just related to like gang writing, like what the normal, you know, quote unquote, basic population would think. And then uh, not till I actually met some of them, like at a metal show, these white guys with long hair and some skinheads and stuff like that. And we're just slammed around the pit and I look over and like the alley we were drinking, the guy had a mean streak and he's like writing his name in that squiggly writing. I was like, you're not a gangster. And he's just like, no man, it's graffiti, you know, tagging and stuff. I'm trying to get up. And I was just like, whoa, like, like different types of people. And then I'd meet like other guys that are doing it from different demographics, different styles and like different mentalities just down to like destroy and like smash and just like get their names up in color and stuff like that. And that was like the attraction to me. It wasn't just like gangsters that were, it's a gang thing, you know? It was just like kids out letting off steam, like fuck society, fuck everybody, this is myself, you know? Just cause I don't have any money, you know? Fuck, I'll express myself. It's all about expression. So. Bitte fahren Sie zur markierten Route. Nach 0,2 Meilen rechts abbiegen in den Middlebury Street, dann links abbiegen. <lacht> Rechts abbiegen in den Middlebury Street, <lacht> dann links abbiegen. Ja, genau. Ja, ja. As soon as I got to New York, I realized that the 10-year anniversary show of the Wooster Collective had its opening the same week. The Wooster Collective runs a famous art blog, which means everyone was in town. So many artists I've always looked up to for a very long time. Most of them have been blocked by Wooster for the last 10 years. Today, most turned out to be well-grown urban artists. Some of them I knew already personally, some I've never met before. There was one artist from my, the younger generation, I've been watching and it turned out that we kept missing each other in other cities and on other continents. But this time we made it, pretty much last minute. He's a Mexican artist named Smite and he was more than down to collaborate. The only problem was, where the hell do a Mexican and an Austrian find a wall to paint in Brooklyn? My uh, family came here from Sicily to uh, get a better life. When they moved here, the neighborhood had changed for the worse. And when I was about 11 or 12, my father was murdered by a drug addict who was trying to mug him. 2008, my mother got diagnosed with a brain tumor and she ended up passing away. This neighborhood here, I grew up and was raised. Everything reminded me of my mother. I couldn't get away from it. I went on a lot of trips outside the country. And the first Mother's Day, I just couldn't. So I painted the walls white prior to it, and somebody had came along within six hours and graffitied it. When I saw that, I got really upset, and I said, you can't really have anything nice and clean. I went on the computer and I googled street art. I liked what they uh, did, and I got in contact with them, and I told them what I wanted to do, and we did it. We painted five walls. We had a, a block party, and it was really great. Putting up art over the graffiti one by one felt good, and then It felt so good that within a year we had 65 murals up. Yeah, th those are the best fucking donuts in New York. Take one. This neighborhood started to vacate when the factories started emptying out. Some other areas outside of Bushwick started to overpopulate and push some of the people out into Bushwick. Now they're living in the factories, they're living in these buildings. I didn't realize what I've done by doing this program. It's brought my community together, I think, more so than changed the neighborhood, because the neighborhood was already here, regardless of whether we put art up on it or not. 
I was a little kid and like my earliest memory of graffiti was basically taking the train into the city and every time the doors would open up, it would be like those big chalkboards. You know, you would see like Keith Haring pieces. Those are the ones that kind of like stood out for me visually because they were so far apart from like everything else that graffiti was, you know, it was almost like graffiti was just like accepted and you didn't even look at it as an art. But when you saw something like Keith Haring, it made you kind of like pay attention to that. This is real art. This is something that's, you know, could possibly progress into something else or inspire something else. Here in New York City, you're always working with other artists and it's a good, kind of like community scene where everyone's kind of like getting each other involved. I moved to New York on a five-year plan thinking if I'm broke and I hate being here after five years, I'll just move on, go somewhere else. Four years of fucking hell later, we start Kid Robot and everything changed for me after that. Yeah, those four years are kind of some of my favorite years because I was living in Crown Heights. I wouldn't have any money, so we just walk around and paint. I had no money. I don't come from a family with money, so I knew I had to do it if something was going to happen. And New York City can be a beast, you know. There's times when I'd be on a rooftop looking at New York City and I would see it as my enemy fighting against me. And then other times I'd see it as this woman that's just fucking the shit out of me lovely, you know what I mean? Like there's times when the city's so good to you, but it can rip that shit away really fast too. Yeah, I mean, I, I was in New York for 15 years and you know, it made me who I am. I lived here longer than anywhere else. So crazy. We went through a lot of paint today. Hey, Dave. Yeah. I have a bunch of spots for you for that. Great surprise. Take a picture of the wall. <laughs> I'm gonna say this is. <laughs> Fuck the wall. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no. you the <laughs> That's crazy. What actually brought me to New York was my second solo show in the United States. I was really lucky because my artworks arrived just a day before the opening. I'm used to never be on schedule, but always on time. But what was even more awesome than my stupid luck was welcoming my parents on their very first trip to America. Traveling keeps my ideas fresh, keeps me scared in a way, but I think being scared is good or failing is good because it allows you to do something new. So I feel like every two years I've kind of been refreshing myself by moving. When I was 25 I lived in Kenya for a year and a half and for me that was the first big place I moved to where everything was foreign and 
That to me was so exhilarating that I've been chasing that feeling ever since. After Kenya, I went to Melbourne. And then from Melbourne, I moved to Bangkok for a year and a half and a similar thing happened. Bangkok is like maybe a Brooklyn of Asia. It's kind of really rough, really creative, has really awesome underground scenes. So I, I felt like New York has the similar grittiness, craziness and adventure. So moving to Brooklyn from Bangkok seemed the right thing to do. I ran into Sherio by accident. I missed a flight to Indonesia and she was in Singapore doing a job. And we hung out for one day. She gave me a masturbating zombie sticker, I think it was. And uh, I was just in love straight away. <laughs> so it's like, this girl's rad. I want to take her out for dinner. So I asked her out for dinner and we went out for dinner. And she gave me a tour of Singapore, showed me her first piece and then invited me to Cambodia where she was staying. So long story short, I kidnapped her and brought her to Brooklyn. So we've been hanging out in Brooklyn for a year and a half, two years now, and painting at Bushwick Collective a lot. The first year she arrived, we painted 40 walls in one year because coming from Singapore, she was like, what do you mean I can just paint on any wall and there's really good spray paint readily available and cheap. So she was like an animal, just super motivated, just let me out the walls, which was great for me. I was already wanting to paint walls, but now having someone to go with you just uh, pushes you even harder and further. And her ideas were so bonkers, it just pushed my subject matter into a different area as well. Like I would look in a sketchbook and I would be afraid for what was going on in her head. It's just some scary, nightmarish, googly-eyed, fucking hot dog dudes. So I started borrowing from her style and then she would steal stuff off me and we kind of formed this weird morph style that we're running with because we, we love doing it and it keeps both of us fresh and I think keeping this um, travel painting life going as long as we can is, is our goal. If we can keep that paying for itself, which currently is, then yeah, we'll be stoked to, to keep that alive. Yeah, we're trying to chase the endless summer, I guess. So when it starts getting cold, we'll start looking to do festivals in warmer places. I wish my plan would go as well as the York's plan. I met up with Dexter in Copenhagen for a street art festival. And summer was just not existent in Europe at that time. I mean, it's not when there's an element there, with foot, then you can only see the knee. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, so it's just a gleich schon fertig. Ich? Dann zu morgen komplett den Schwanz machen. Ja, ich brauche schon ein bisschen da. Und die ganzen Eingeweide machen. Naja, aber morgen. Morgen ist auch noch ein Tag. The rain sucked, but it couldn't really stop us. Collaboration murals with my crew members are always fun. And the good thing is, I mostly don't have to explain much. Because we understand each other very well, even drunk. <laughs> the mixture of our styles always makes it funky. Ja, ich habe aber auch schon wieder halt zwei Bier mehr getrunken als du. Naja, das hast du das zwei Bier drin. Nee. <lacht> Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Berlin is something like the hometown of our crew. So every time I go there, I feel like I come home to Vienna. And I guess this is only because of those people. Spots and walls are barely a problem. Because my crew members have set it all up in advance. Since I know so many great people there, there's barely a night, which turns out to be boring. Oh, I hope it's not going to be one of those days. With all this traveling and painting, and eating and drinking, and enjoying life, money goes fast, and of course you have to live of something. In Berlin we had the opportunity to produce a screen print. A lot of the art I produce on the road, next to painting of course, is digital. And I have my computer always with me. In this case, I left the rest of the job to the printer, because I just suck in screen printing. Plus. I had to dissect a wild boar. The fact that Berlin is full of those wild boars, what turns out to be a pain in the ass for the citizens, is probably one reason why I decided to paint one. These animals have similar problems to graffiti writers in Berlin. They are not needed and the city is full of them. So the boar kind of faces the same destiny, hunted down till judgment day. Another reason why I painted it is that loads of my art is somehow connected to my childhood. And as a kid I got bitten by one when I was seven. Studying and painting its anatomy kind of defaces it as an enemy. To me, it feels more like honoring the animal than destroying a life form. Und seid ihr Graffiti Sprayer? Ja, manchmal. Manchmal? Wo denn? Hier und Mauerkarten. Das ist mir nicht manchmal, das ist mir schon immer. Ne, na, manchmal habe ich das Geld dafür, manchmal habe ich kein Geld dafür. Ah ja? Früher hatte niemand Geld dafür, die haben trotzdem immer gesprüht. Das macht Spaß und haben so hinzu. Ja, ich weiß. Das macht schon ziemlich Spaß. Ja. Ja, Viel Spaß noch, ne? Ja. Yeah, we are some kind of urban illustrator crew from Germany and Austria and we are 10 people. And a few of us have been very good friends for a long time now. Some of us met in 2012 at an event in Berlin. We painted a big wall with Flying Fortress and others. 
then there was a festival in Vienna and I just took care of the artists and, and then that was the starting point of first waltz. And then at the next gathering somewhere in Germany, the crew name was invented in a drunken night session. The next day we painted the weird there and that was the starting point for all of us. The crew was born out of fun because we wanted to have fun. At that point it made sense because we were all character painters. So we thought, okay, let's start a crew which only concentrates on characters and the world behind these characters. I think the most important thing of the weird is we um, completely have different styles. Me, for example, I really like bold and, and very clean and almost like a computer graphic graffiti design or something. Someone like Rookie is painting more like real painting with oil paint and stuff like this. And it's somehow melting together and that's yeah what the weird crew is all about. Ah, so we normal. Become a crew was one of the most important steps in my life because it was um, at a moment where I really was thinking for myself do I really want to continue that way I took. So I always missed people to work with together. With all the weird members, there was a, a very special mood when we met the first time and it was perfect for working and it really fit a lot with my philosophy about my work. Wir und Tom hat sich den Arm gebrochen. Das war aber nicht so lustig. Also einer von uns liegt jetzt gerade im Krankenhaus. Wahrscheinlich ist er gerade aus, dem, aus der Narkose erwacht und wird wahrscheinlich nie wieder malen können. Nee. <lacht> nee. Aber sein Arm wird wahrscheinlich eingegipst sein oder wie auch immer. Ich soll doch mal heute in zwei Tagen. Morgen. Ich tippe auch auf Donnerstag. Heute Nachmittag. Nee. Das ist schon Nachmittag. Das ist jetzt 16 Uhr. Kommt gleich. Dann geht's los. <lacht> So, Großmalen ist doch euer Ding. Wie hebt man das an? Planung und viel Geld. <lacht> <lacht> ja, der Witz ist, eigentlich ist die Herangehensweise gar nicht so unterschiedlich zu einer kleinen Illustration. Es ist halt alles von der Dimension entsprechend größer. Ja, und das, das kostet dann halt auch, wenn man jetzt hier tausend Dosen hinstellt, nur weil man eine Wand malen will. Das ist nicht so, das kann man am Computer alles so wunderschön innerhalb von zwei Tagen illustrieren und wie auch immer. Kostet dich keinen Cent. Aber eben so eine Riesenwand ist halt wirklich kostspielig. Und das ist halt natürlich irgendwie eine super Sache, dass wir jetzt hier so eine Möglichkeit haben. Also das ist natürlich schon eine Herausforderung, als Gruppe mit zehn Menschen auf einen Konsens zu kommen, zusammenzuarbeiten. Andererseits ist es natürlich auch ja, wenn ein bestimmtes Niveau erreicht ist, 
die Herausforderung, also das wirklich gerade voranzutreiben, denn das ist ja auch das Einzigartige, das gibt es nicht so oft in der Welt, wirklich äh, zehn Menschen mit, der, mit dem Niveau, was die Arbeit angeht. Deswegen sind wir halt auch neugierig, wo es hingeht. Da ich doch schon wieder ein Glas Niveauvolle Menschen. Also eine Farbenauswertung tut mir immer sehr, sehr schwer. Meine Fresse. I think all of us are coming from an era where you learned through really old school graffiti the roots, where it all comes from. So starting in the mid or late 90s, it was a quite different thing than wall painting right now is. One thing that is very obvious is it became much more illustrative, so people very often start already with um, painting characters and figurative stuff. Luxembourg, I think, was pretty nice. The whole weird crew came together, and that's not really often. Like, we try to do it like one or two times a year. We always enjoy these super large paintings, like painting a whole whole supermarket inside. It's difficult because you're 10 people, and it's very, very huge, and you have to really make compromises. We painted the weird dreams and every one of us uh, yeah, painted some dreams they had before. So it was a nice mixture of very surreal stuff and um, very cartoony and funny things that happened. Yeah, we had another funny concept this time, like little islands of dreams flying around on the walls. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was really a nice concept because you could do your own stuff, but it just works together. The, the crew is growing together now. We are getting one person. <laughs>
Miami Touring Art Basel is off the hook. Hundreds of urban artists and graffiti writers from all around the world are coming to town. Which means you gotta be fast and hunt for your walls. But if this is set, you are ready to rock. Windward District is kind of like dead during the year. But in December it has a crazy amount of visitors that mainly go to art fairs and watch people paint in the streets. It turns into complete mayhem and all the murals function as advertisement for our art. When you walk through a street you see billboard, ad, lawyer, sue this person. And when we create murals, people go, well, what is that? Well, I don't know what that is, and I don't get it. I mean, I don't not like it. But because we're so programmed with commercial advertisement, you know, all these things that are forced into our psyche, and then boom, you break the mold, and you put up this wild mural that you can't necessarily decipher. You don't even know why it's there. And most people can't even comprehend why somebody would do that. And then why they would do it for free? I mean, it's just like blows people away. I mean, my parents came here from the Philippines and they knew that they couldn't provide the opportunities for their kids. And they settled in the Bronx and, you know, that's where I was born and raised. Knowing like what they gave up to come here to like a foreign country, like I wouldn't be an artist if I was living in the Philippines. Just growing up, I traveled the world a lot. I felt really lucky to do that. I was a new kid, went to a lot of different schools, and my art was kind of all I had. So it was something that I, I clung to really tightly to understand who I was as a person. And uh, around 10 years ago, started a toy company called Kid Robot. And that's the first time that I really started to get connected to artists everywhere. And they're all doing the same thing you're doing. So any city you go to, you know someone who knows someone who can take you to paint somewhere. It's like the graffiti underground railroad. You know, not everyone kind of gets what your lifestyle is like, so it's kind of nice to be around those people to understand it. And uh, it's cool, you get to travel, paint for livings. You know, very lucky thing. Okay, buddy, okay, buddy, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Put the cans down. Get your ass up and get your hands up. Let me see your hands. Get your hands up. Keep an eye on everybody down the street. You got it covered? <laughs> <laughs> keep it moving, Nick. Keep it moving. It's dark, cold, inhospitable. There are also craters. 
It almost looks as if the atmosphere is frozen. Shall we send a probe, Captain? No, I was thinking of landing on the planet. Jack, is the landing module in working condition? The module's working perfectly, Captain. And it'll be much easier to repair that faulty generator if we're on firm ground. Yeah. All crew members to your stations. Prepare for landing. Let's go, baby. In the, in the, in the, in the report. You snitty, I'm too fly. Spaceship fool, attempting to fly by. And buzz my co pilot and burn you like ultraviolet rays. Ask you about me, they be going for days. Like, but he's talking about the greatest brain ever made by man. And I just got back from Saturn. I'm into the lag, you can check the pattern. And I'm all jeweled up like the rings on Saturn. If you want to know the secret, just ask me. If I don't tell you no go, Joe, I'll say exactly. So please get at me with no hesitation. The proper procedure, it might have prevented this situation. So come fly with me. We hit hyper drive. We doing the buck 50. And you can't win. You don't stand a chance. Your arrogance was well known in advance. For myself, Art Basel appears to be the biggest birthday party you can imagine. And the best recovery is actually to fly straight to Hawaii a few weeks later to escape the European winter. And again, to do nothing else than painting walls with my friends from all over the world. to do this tour called the Holo Holo Hawaii. And basically what that is, we want to expose people to the history of Hawaii and more about the place that they're painting in. We also hope that it can help to inspire some of the artists to sort of think about how their art may affect Hawaii people or affect local people here. Prime and Estria really do a lot of goodwill by taking us out into these areas, uh, showing us and telling us and teaching us about what these rocks mean. They say, don't touch the rocks until you state your intentions. And really what that comes to is, what are our intentions? They teach you about how ancient Hawaiians loved the land and saw that there was energy and power in every object, inanimate or alive. It really shows you that when you're gonna approach your wall, state your intention and execute your intention. And that's what this island taught us. Hawaii has always been a very strategic military spot for the American government. And during that time, they also built a lot of lookout points, bunkers, and military facilities to be prepared for any sort of attack. Their second life has been as painting spots for people. What's amazing is that a lot of them are in jungles or up hikes or up mountains and they made for some amazing views and some amazing opportunities to paint on walls that you would never get anywhere else in the world. So they're more or less like secret, but um, whenever people come to Hawaii, we try to take them to these places because they're just amazing to paint in. Yeah. Roller control. I got roller control. <laughs> Fucking mosquitoes are now here. Shit. It's like I'm on a new chapter in my life. I've just turned you know, 40 years old, and I've been painting consistently for a long time. And uh, for years, actually for decades, I worked in the skateboard industry. I always seemed to be working for someone else, but at the same time, it allowed me to moonlight as an artist, or as a graffiti artist, and traveling and painting and networking. Come back to me. Come back to me. Magic. 
it got to a point where probably had done it too long and dedicated too much energy into it. But because of it, I've been able to experience so much. And now I'm at a point where I feel like I'm really hitting a stride in my own art career. So it's exciting. It was my second time on Oahu, Hawaii, and I really enjoyed it the year before. But I didn't get to explore the island much. I always wanted to paint in places not many people get to. But if someone does, he might find my piece. In those three weeks, I was fully dedicated to leave my mark. Staying in a house, directly on the beach, together with all the other artists and our homies from Detroit, was pretty much the pole position to exchange and work on some ideas for the upcoming event. Anyone interested in a scramble or some eggs or something like that? I, if, you, if you're making it, I would absolutely have it. Die sitzen und den Teufel malen, gell? 
When a group of artists converge on one location, it's actually a really beautiful and amazing experience because you get these two weeks to spend an intimate amount of time every day. Good morning, good night. Wow, your mural's progressing. You know, there'll be groups of people doing murals in different cities around the world, but there's not a cohesive festival that brought this many artists together until Pow Wow Hawaii came together. Really what's happening with Pow Wow is so intense. I've never seen anything quite like it. Mm. He is fucking pissed. Uh, yeah, he is pissed. <laughs> <laughs> go I've always been a fan of Nitrous's work, but also at the same time, I know that his work could be controversial because it could be perceived differently. Uh, during Pow Wow 2013, Nitrous did a collaborative mural with Jeff Soto, and he painted a shark, and the shark was dissected. And there was nothing negative about it. And Hawaiian people see sharks as spirit animals, as amakuas and they thought that we were painting a mural with like their spirit animal being killed when in fact it wasn't, it was being honored. And so it was just a, it was really at the end of the day just a miscommunication. But it was also great because it kind of opened people's eyes to shark finning to a degree and it also made people think about how different things are being conceived in different parts of the world. It was more just a cultural divide and no one had any bad intentions at the end of the day. I really like that idea, like the power of the image more than like the thing itself. So that's why I've been painting uh, ice cream a lot, you know, because professional photos of ice cream are amazing. Uh, you know, they call it food porn. Like, these photos are so awesome. And the experience of looking at the photo is actually better than the experience of eating the ice cream. Bubble letter style, my name Cole. I did this like all over the subways and all over the streets of New York. So as I got older and older, it became something kind of like a pop art symbol. It's kind of crazy to say I used to do this illegal in the streets as a kid, but now I make a living off this. So all in all, what we did is uh, we did something that was very positive for the community. We did something that fulfilled ourselves internally and we're able to just like have a good time. And that was really what is at the core of what we do as independently minded beings that don't really have day jobs, but we work our ass off. And to have an opportunity to go anywhere we want in the world at any time and meet people that have the same belief system in freedom and not walk around with the chains of the corporate world, which says that you need a bank account and you need 2.5 cars and you need 3.5 kids and you need a white picket fence. That, to me, is what really embodies the spirit of the artist. When you walk through the streets of Kaka'ako and you see V Hills, Buff Monster, Insa, Inti, Dab Smila, you know, you just like, wow, man, it's like so mind blowing. Ron English could be around the corner and then they're all together. Like, who would think that when guys were reading graffiti mags, that they would be sitting at dinner with Martha Cooper? Really, if Martha Cooper didn't catch the subway trains and Coke 2 didn't paint them, and guys like Persuade didn't catch that on the West Coast, there's a whole new breed of artists that are now emerging from that core underground culture. And I would say that across the board, why all these artists are able to get along like old friends is because we all come from a counterculture background. Whether it's skate, surf, graffiti, uh, tattoos, punk rock, Everybody comes from counterculture. That's why 
we are funneling that into this creative spirit that now lives in the public domain. And then you just walk through Takahako and you're like, these are all people that buck the system. The voice of an artist is really only allowed to exist in a gallery. And that no longer exists anymore because we've broken all the rules and we've said we're going to do it our way. And that's what Pawa Hawaii is really all about. Suddenly, you find yourself back home after all this traveling filled with crazy memories. And the year has gone. And it's winter again. And life's quiet. I couldn't even go back to that spot for taking a photo of that piece I got chased off the year before. I'm praying that it's still there in its full shine. That's the point you realize how intense your year has been and how much has actually happened. And you're fucking grateful for that experience. But it's not over. Another year has just begun. And I will keep going as long as I can, because I love what I do. I guess this is what my life has developed to. There will be more journeys, more cities, more systems to explore. All I have to do is to follow the white rabbit. And you can follow me into the deepest depths of the burrow. Stare at me, they cannot believe what they see is real. An image of death. Oh, my love, oh. can you hear my call? I am your ghost, watching your every step. I didn't want you. Das ist kein Gewalt. Wenn die Kinder kommen, immer schrecken. Das müssen wir mal gucken. Das ist ja schon bunt genug. Wir werden schon ein Penis packen. Nichos. Ich sehe deine Schuhe, als ich auf dem Boden war. Es war auf dem Boden, als ich auf dem Boden war. Thank you. It's on me. 